strange did happen in space. It was the opportunity to see the universe and see the world from a different perspective. They say travel broadens. <laughs> Information is just patterns of energy. And whether it's in molecular form or whether it's in the form of light and whether it's in just those patterns upon the wall, those are patterns of energy to which we give meaning. The quantum hologram looks like it is the mechanism that provides the information that Sheldrake talked about. What's quantum hologram? <clears throat> All matter at the molecular level emits and reabsorbs quanta of energy spontaneously. So that if you were to look at any bit of matter, whether that's chair, this podium, our bodies, whatever, physical matter is emitting at the molecular level quanta of energy and reabsorbing it. That's a well-known, accepted fact. It's been around since the beginning of quantum mechanics for 75 years. Here is the kicker. Those emissions are coherent and carry information. That's a wow. So many of the characteristics of a classical hologram are indigenous and a part of the way nature has structured itself, and we've just discovered it. What are the properties of a quantum hologram that make it so exciting? Well, first of all, it operates by phase conjugate adaptive resonance. For everybody in this room, the last word is the important one, resonance. What is PCAR, phase conjugate adaptive resonance? It's simply a mathematical term describing how resonance takes place. And it's the same type of resonance in principle we talk about. If you pluck a violin string here and a similarly tuned violin string across the room starts to resonate or move in harmony with the string. It's the same type of resonance. Or if you take a jump rope and both of you are shaking it and holding it the same and you get a wave in there, that is a standing wave would be two resonant phase conjugate waves moving against each other so that they appear as a standing wave. That is resonance. It also has the property of distributedness such that a little portion of the hologram has all the information. It goes non-locally. What is happening with the quantum hologram it's the macro scale equivalent of the quantum correlation that physicists discovered 75 years ago with regard to subatomic particles. And the information is recoverable through resonance. That's where the MRI machine <coughs> was set up. And if you happen to know any of the physics and the mathematics of an MRI machine, you know that you're dealing with a resonance. It's time irreversible. In other words, a quantum hologram that is produced by a physical object doesn't go back. It's not lost. It's time irreversible. There's no real energy loss because the energy loss is being replaced continuously by quantum fluctuations from the zero-point field. In other words, there is a unique evolutionary history associated with each quantum hologram, which means each one of us and each thing is unique in and of itself. It's not just a mathematical model. It is real stuff there. It's energy flowing. What are the major implications that we're talking about here? All physical matter has quantum attributes. The point is that the quantum properties of macroscale matter are represented by the quantum hologram itself. So the quantum hologram is the wave nature of, for macro-scale matter of the famous wave-particle duality which spawned quantum mechanics in the beginning. So <clears throat> let's talk about it in this way. We're not talking about subatomic particles, infinitesimal things. We're talking about real stuff here. And we have associated with this real stuff a wave attribute which obeys virtually the same quantum rules that the wave-particle duality does at the subatomic level. However, 
we're talking about macro scale stuff. So essentially what it's saying, we live in a quantum universe. So getting beneath those, that chemical model that we've used and had for almost a century now of how the body works <coughs> to understand and explore the electromagnetic and, and quantum effects is really what this is all about. Because the QH is likely responsible for most of these subtle energy, numinous effects that we know happen in humans, the chi, the, the zero point field, all of these things. Just like you've heard about electromagnetic interference, you can't, you can't uh, do your cell phone or run your computer when you're in an airplane and it's taking off because of the electromagnetic radiation interactions and interference. <clears throat> Much of what we're seeing probably in the human aura effects associated with the human body, the human thought, and these are uh, very likely associated with quantum effects or the interaction of quantum effects, chemical effects, and electromagnetic and magnetic effects. So these 2D slides analyzed using three-dimensional analysis modern computer software, which wasn't invented until 15 or 20 years ago. And we could take 50 years later that slide, put it on a computer analysis, turn it around like you were looking at it in real life. It was submitted to, for independent analysis to MRI experts <coughs> at one of the leading universities here, double blind, they didn't know what they were looking at. I said, that's the best MRI image I've ever seen, but how did you get those slices so perfectly? wasn't MRI slices at all. It was a single slide with three-dimensional encoding. Ladies and gentlemen, the only thing that could done, have done that in modern theory is a quantum hologram. It's the only thing that carries the information and has a distributed property so that the entire information was carried in a drop of blood. Possible new discoveries coming up from the quantum holographic work. One of the most exciting is that the physical matter is a self-referencing quantum system. Well, what does that mean? You know about a hologram. If, if these guys down here on the strip and their shows want to create a holographic image on the stage, they have to have a reference signal that decodes a two-dimensional hologram and thereby creates a three-dimensional image on the stage for you. So you can see it, but you can't touch it. You can put your hand through it. The quantum hologram is kind of the same thing. It's an image carrying information, a distributed image. But one of the big problems in quantum physics is what's the reference? They haven't really concerned themselves too much with phase. All of a sudden now we're interested in phase. What is the reference? It turns out each individual physical object is its own reference. What does that mean? It's its own zero point. Used to graphing something, you have to have a datum x, y coordinates, and a zero point. Every physical object is its own zero point for the emission of the quantum holographic waves.